episode of Harmonic Progression with Music Student 101. It's time to ready your ears and your theory brains. It's time to boost your ear training skills to another level. But most important, it's time for more Jeremy Torture. Brought to you by Matthew Scott Phillips. Hey, 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 we are back. We are back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon for those of you who are listening in the afternoon, or good morning, good evening, good day. Did you miss us? Uh, I missed us. I missed you, Matt. (laughs) It's been a while. We actually had a week off because uh, this month has five weeks in it. Yeah. Or the last month did. Yeah, and it was nice. Yeah, it, it was not because uh, not because I, I don't like doing this. I do, but all, of all the other stuff going on, it is summertime. Yeah, and you think you think summertime. You know when when you teach college, you know you think oh summertime. You know light. You know, uh, living is easy, and uh, now it's just a time to do all the other stuff that you don't get to do. So <laughs> time to live a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so in our absence, um, we got a couple of emails here. Oh, yay. I don't have a sheet. Oh, I have it right here, Matt. Okay. The, I didn't want you to uh, read it ahead of time because even <laughs> though I read these emails, someone's got to read the emails, right? Yeah, and it's, it's not me. Uh, yeah, uh, again, ex- apologies to everyone because I'm terrible with this. But Jeremy's here's, better. Here's the thing. No, I, if people ask questions, I do copy and send them to you. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes I want to get your natural response. All right. Right here uh, live. All so right. To speak. So, That's going to be fun so, uh, and unpredictable. Let me just say this, Matt. It's been kind of a tough week for us here at Music Student 101. <laughs> we took a couple of hits. Took a couple of hits. Oh, no. You're taking a hit, and I'm going to take a hit. Okay. Well, at least the hits are distributed. Yes. Stand by. I'm going to walk over here and hand you your paper. Okay. (laughs) So should I get all my what the fucks even out? (laughs) Yeah, go ahead and get those out of the way, because I have a couple, too. Don't read it. I see you trying to read it. Okay. 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 (laughs) Okay. 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 No, this is is all in good fun. Um, Okay. The first review that we have here... Uh-huh. Is our first four star review out of about sixty reviews. So what what the F man? To me it's a sad day because we didn't get we don't have all We don't have a perfect uh four point oh GPA anymore. Five point oh GPA. I know, anymore. I know. So Matt, why don't you take this one? Okay, let's see. So this comes from Chris the Coolest from Great Britain. Uh-huh. Four stars, as yes. we've established. Mm. Says, uh, great content, great delivery, but dear God, please employ a pianist. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm going to come out swinging yeah. for you, Matt. I, 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 I'm kind of feeling them, actually. Uh-huh. Or pre-record some piano examples. Currently listen to the modulation episode, and the playing really hinders being able to hear a flowing modulation. That being said, everything else is top notch. Really enjoyed this show. Just some constructive criticism. Ah. Uh, well, I I feel you, Chris. I feel you. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I am not a pianist, and if you're a pianist, I you probably gotta be cringing at some of the things I do. Uh, the, uh, apologies to all pianists out there. Although, you know? let's talk about this for a second, if we can, because I appreciate what he's saying. Yeah. However, do you know what it costs to uh, hire a pianist? But- well, I was going to say, you can support us through patreon.com slash music suit at 101. <laughs> you know, we get enough money coming in, and that is definitely towards the top of my list. Let's get some actual pianists in here. But, you know, if we hired a pianist, we'd still have to tell them. We'd have to have them sit here and play while you're talking, and we'd yeah. have to tell them the examples. I just don't see if that would be, I don't see how that would be. Uh... We'd have to have a good pianist that knows the theory. Well, not that that that, that doesn't exist. The kind that you'd want to pay eighty to one hundred dollars an hour for. Yeah, (laughs) but again, we don't have that. All we have is our coffee mugs. (laughs) We and uh, (laughs) our pre our our pre coffee our pre show coffee and yeah, getting me going. Uh, He should hear some outtakes. You think whatever what actually makes it into the podcast is bad? Yeah, yeah. He should hear some of the you know. But let's address the let's address the concern. Maybe they maybe maybe we can be a little better about trying to be conscious about. Talking through examples and playing them a little right, slower yeah, or a yeah, little more. Yeah, uh, hinders being able to hear a flowing modulation. Right. Uh, yeah, to a certain extent, I probably am trying to uh, 
talk while I play and probably trying to explain the modulation rather than just uh, having it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, may maybe we should, uh, we could do, we probably will at some point do some, uh, are we calling them ear training episodes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Harmonic at, progression At some episodes. point, we're probably going to do a harmonic progression episodes that have some ear training in them. Mm -hmm. In which case, you'll just hear me play a modulation and, and oh. see, you know. See how that see how that goes. You yeah. Know, uh, otherwise, um, so so but uh, but yeah. Uh, criticism duly noted. Yeah yeah. Uh, 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 thank you for your feedback and yeah. By the way, I and yeah, I'm I am never going to sit here and take a f take offense <laughs> or be affronted at piano playing criticism because God knows I am not a piano player. Yeah yeah. Well, I couldn't do that. So <laughs> I thank you for trying, Matt. Um. Now, let's see here. Oh, you know what? And also, Jay, the guitar player, wrote me recently. Ah, Jay. Not, not more than a day or two after that. Yeah. And How's he, Jay doing these days? Well, he's actually driving um, semi-trucks now. Oh, nice. And he um, he actually, he was asking my advice about, or he was telling me that he's he's found another fellow trucker to play on the road with. Oh, sweet. He's like looking into these small, cheap guitars and amps he could bring on the road with him. Okay. And he said that while he was driving, while he's driving, listening to our podcast, he says the voices come out loud and clear. Mm-hmm. Um, but the piano is kind of quiet. I see. Okay. And I was like, well, is that just the one episode you're talking about or is that in general? Yeah. Now, that might explain a little bit why our, our friend Chris the Coolest couldn't hear. So maybe I should go back and listen for the mix for the piano. Yeah, maybe bump the piano a little bit. Maybe a couple of dB. Maybe I'll try that. I, if Jay is on the road listening, you know, there's all sorts of uh, uncontrollable sound environments in, in a vehicle, right? A Especially when of that size. A semi-truck, yeah. no less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it, could, it could hamper the, the clarity of, of some things, definitely. And he also says he's been using Bluetooth headset to listen, so I don't know yeah. if that's, that's also a factor. But Potentially. regardless, we will try and see if we can do something to make the piano a little bit more. Yeah, regardless, we will do that. What's that old uh, Salmon adage? I always assume the listener has... You know, like one eight-inch speaker mounted on something vibrating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was your turn, Matt. That was. Um, yeah. That wasn't. So, so we bad. got one. And I got one. You got one. You ready for mine? Both piano related. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I we had finished the episode on the Schumann resonance. Oh yeah. And I was very nervous about this episode. We Matt, both were because we stepped out of our um, comfort Com zone. A comfort little bit. zones a little bit, yeah. And my finger did quiver as it hovered over the submit button, <laughs> and I just went ahead and pushed it because a lot of the stuff I had watched many rudimentary cartoon videos explaining how physics would work. Right. But the yeah. one thing I thought I knew. Yeah, I, not that kind of doctor. It's sad to say. No, no. So dig this, man. Um, again, two or three days after the release, I see in. A, an inbox, a letter in my inbox that says, Music Student 101 needs a physicist. <laughs> and I said, Oh, oh, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> Only I didn't say fudge. <laughs> but, uh, but this is good news because this man still believes in us. He is our Patreon patron now. Thank you so much. And let me tell you about our Patreon patron, Andrew Zentner. Okay. Astrophysicist at the University of Pittsburgh. University of Pittsburgh astrophysicist, guitarist, and Music Student 101 listener. Wow. Okay. I am impressed. Okay, well, it's my turn. You ready? Yeah. yeah. He said, uh, I enjoy listening to your podcast regularly. However, before I continue to compliment you on Music Student 101, I hereby offer my services as a professional <laughs> physicist <laughs> to Music Student 101. <laughs> Should awesome. They should they be needed in the future? He says it was kind of good that we gave disclaimers that we weren't actually physicists. Oh, those disclaimers were very necessary. And he said that that kind of became evident with my discussion. Uh, yeah, the red shift I, yeah, our discussion, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. Well, you asked all the right questions. I just gave a few wrong answers. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we're going to address those in just a second, okay? Okay, okay. He says, my specialty is astrophysics, and I'm happy to be on call. I hope you don't mind a bit of friendly ribbing. We never do. As I've listened to so many episodes that I feel as though I know you. Oh, that's nice. Hey, remember how we were talking about in the last episode? We talked about that, actually. Yeah, we have kind of a little community that's kind of come up around this podcast, yeah. So, back to the compliments. Yes, by all means, let's, <laughs> let's get back to the compliments, shall we? Mind our fragile musician egos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
He says, Music Student 101 is great. It's educational and easy to listen to. I have listened to nearly all of your episodes and look forward to each new episode. I took music theory courses in college more than 20 years ago, and your podcast has been the perfect way to keep whatever it is that I know of music theory fresh. I play guitar, and the regular refreshers have helped me out on many occasions. For example, I've been trying to encourage my two sons to stick with music, so I've been taking popular songs that they like to listen to and writing simple arrangements that they can play on their cellos while I play guitar. Oh, that sounds very nice. Isn't that cool? I'd love to hear some of those. Actually, if you yeah. Can, you can, if you can get a little crappy recording somehow. Yeah, remember we had an episode on children and music? If, yes. If you're, look, if you're lucky enough to have a kid who's really into music and they just enjoy it, yeah. that's a great way to uh, cultivate not only them as artists, but right, actually yeah. as uh, it expands the spatial reasoning and all that stuff. And, and all that stuff we talked about. A lot of beneficial then. things. Yeah, yeah. That. Of course, I'm not going to get into the science of that. <laughs> Less some child psychologist. We're not neuroscientists We're either. We're not neuroscientists. <laughs> oh, God, where was I? Okay. It um, turns out. Okay. It turns out knowing a bit of music theory makes it much easier to transcribe songs by ear. Mm-hmm. My next stop will be your Patreon page because it is about time that I pay my fair share. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, well, th- thank you so much. And he did just that. He is now on Patreon, and he is so he can't be that mad at us. <laughs> no, 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 and and yes, we we said uh, uh, according to my memory, we we disclaimered many many times in that episode, and it's necessary. And it was not an accident, because you know, yeah, yeah. Um, being an an academic person myself with with doctoral degrees myself, I am I very much share Andrew's sentiment that. You really ought to be careful when you don't know what you're talking about. Yes. You know, when you're an expert, say you're an expert, and when yeah. you're not, you're not, and that should be clear. Yeah. Right? I have a lot of, um, what do you call them, uh, you know, uh, don't quote me on that. Don't quote of. me on that, yeah. Even in, in music theory, where I am the expert, you know, people who have gotten replies from me might have noticed that I will say, I'm going to tentatively call this this thing or that, you know, because even even in my field... You know, um, I don't like to. Uh, I, I don't uh, like to come across like my my opinion is is the end all be all. Mm-hmm. You know, and so yeah, when we're getting into the field of astrophysics, uh, we probably definitely need an on call uh, physicist because so. we're going to do an episode on acoustics pretty soon too. And you bet, yeah, and Andrew's going to be listening intently to that one. Yeah, he so. will hear it before anyone else hears. He it. He will hear it before anyone that. else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure we're on our up and up. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so we thank you for that, Andrew. And, um, uh, you know, Matt and I are not the snowflakes that, that um, some might imagine. Not, you don't you don't go through five years of doctoral school and be a snowflake. No, no, no. You're always challenged. <laughs> Although, Matt, this is 73 episodes in and no one has challenged your theory. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's almost terrifying. <laughs> should I should I have even said that? Should I have not a jinxist like that? <laughs> it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Well, but, let me, uh, yeah. Let me go over this real quick because um, if you just heard the episode on the Schumann Resonance, mm-hmm. episode seventy two, it's cool. Everything's been updated. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So we we took out what we were saying that was not. I not fixed great. it. I oh, even took awesome. it. As, it okay. still sounded like we were having a completely organic conversation. Only I changed some things. The magic of editing. And I'll tell you how. I, I'll tell you what I changed. First of all, the the red shift. Uh huh. I think what I said was that the 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 there's a change in light as the planets move further away from us. Yeah. But it's not the planets that are moving further away from okay. us. It is actual galaxies that, that are, are moving, moving further away from, away from, us. from us. Okay. Yeah. So no no don't all freak out saying oh my god Jupiter's running away. <laughs> Um, that's not happening. It's actually the space, the actual empty space in between these bodies that is expanding. Wow. So it's not the planets moving away. Which is actually fascinating when you yes. think about it. Yes. The further away the galaxies are, the more red and shift they were. And mm-hmm. so the faster that they were moving, that's how we kind of determined that. Okay. I'm not going to say anything else about that. <laughs> but just go back and listen. Or, um, you know, yeah. check out a physics podcast. Check out a physics podcast. I, uh, I bet Andrew could recommend some good ones. Another one was, Matt, you asked how electromagnetic fields, what is waving in electromagnetic fields? Yeah. Electromagnetic fields. Yeah, well, yeah right. And it turns out um, the actual fields themselves, the energy fields are waving. I see. So it's the actual electromagnetic energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We made it clear that it was not through um, mechanical action, molecules being... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But again, more magic. Uh, wow. You know. 
Yeah. I, it, this is a field that fascinates me, by the way. I wish I, you know, if I'd had it to do over again, I might have considered astrophysics. Well, I sure as hell would have paid more attention to my <laughs> Hey, this, this astronomy course was 20 years ago, okay? <laughs> the one part I thought I recognized, or the one part I thought I knew, I just prattled out like, like I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. It's actually good to have an astrophysicist that we can ask these questions. Yeah, <laughs> and clarify these things. Because yeah. he wrote me a really good details. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm way dumbing down what he said. But yeah. uh, he wanted to understand that I, he wanted to make sure that I understood. It stood, yeah. And I think I do. And, and good on him for that. And we certainly appreciate the clarification from an expert. Totally. Which is something we are not. Uh, you also notice in our discussion of radio transmission, um, electromagnetic waves are used for the carrier waves. Not okay. Not obviously mechanical waves. Okay. And what they're carrying is, is the, the microphone translates audio to an actual le electrical signals. Electrical, yeah, yeah. Signals. Yeah, I did know that. Okay, so I don't, I don't think I clarified that, okay. but I have now. All right. And then one more thing also to clarify, this signal is introduced to a carrier wave. The transmitter is tuned to a frequency. That is the carrier wave. It sends the new information to a receiver tuned to the same frequency, which then retranslates that electric information to sound on the receiver or the radio end. Yeah. That uh, actually clarifies a lot of my understanding. Yeah. So so that's uh, of how... Because uh, I've always wondered, well, yeah, and I'm, I may have brought it up, I don't even remember, but I, I've always wondered, well, how is there a carrier wave and a modulator wave mm -hmm. you know, if, it's, if they're both mechanical waves? Yeah. So the answer is they're not both mechanical waves, and that's how you can... So, so yeah, that... that uh, I think... You know, I think. I might be even saying even more wrong stuff, and Andrew is even going to get even more uh, irritated <laughs> at us. So let's just stop. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Andrew. Hey, we are kind of speaking from a position of authority as as educators, you know what right. I mean? Right, yeah. And that's why it hurt me so much to realize I might have sent some, you know, some bunk information. Right, yeah, and that's why it is. it is because of that that it is so important that we, A, Disclaimer when we're talking outside of our field and be correct when we say things that are misleading or inaccurate. Right. And C, not be snowflakes about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've done pretty good. We're, we're fortunate, I think, to when you hear about all the people I know that do this stuff and some of the scathing reviews and emails and stuff they get. I think we're pretty lucky. I think we yeah, I think our listeners are good to us. And I, I think we're we, we very much appreciate that. And 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 yeah. We, should, uh, we, we are not afraid of some constructive criticism. We appreciate your support and your honesty. Yeah, yeah. Now, if the criticism is not constructive and you're just, you know, flaming on us or something like that, you know, we, we might ignore you. I can't but, stand Matt's voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make him talk different. Again, yeah. <laughs> Again, I feel you. I hate the sound of my own voice, too. Uh, you know. We already do. <laughs> we, I don't know what to tell you. That's already been addressed. Yeah. Okay. okay. This podcast is stupid. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Your turn, buddy. My turn. We have listener mail. Mm hmm. Uh, and our, uh, I don't have a name to this, I don't think. I'm sorry. I did. Yeah, it's it's Emmanuel Lacruet. Okay. With an accent on the last syllable. Lacruet. Lacruet. Lacruet, yeah. yeah. Right, so this comes from uh, Emmanuel Lacruet. Lacruet. Mm hmm. Uh, hope that was at least close. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, hi guys, greetings from Argentina. Hey, hey. Nice. Uh, I'm Emmanuel, a very fresh music college student, but a long time informal guitarist. Mm -hmm. We understand. <laughs> Been there. Uh, I'm just writing you to express my gratitude for all the precious information that is encapsulated in every chapter of the podcast. I love the way of teaching you have, and I'm also practicing my listening skills. English is not my mother tongue. And the funny thing is how knowing another language can unlock knowledge in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. For example, we don't use in Spanish, or at least I've never heard of anyone using mnemonics for the order of flats. Huh. I, I bet that's true. Right. There may be a Spanish mnemonic that we just don't know, but, but yeah, it, it won't work in Spanish. No, you'd have to come up with a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, so that's interesting. And in the moment I learned... Battle ends and down goes Charles's father. It just blew my mind. <laughs> so that's B E A D G C F. So that sounds like the order of flats. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it just blew my mind. It helped me a lot with key signatures. And right in that moment, I knew I had to keep digging information in that language. And that's how I found Music Student 101. 
So basically, I'm very thankful on the way you guys explain things so clearly. It helps me a lot. Well, thank you so much, Emmanuel. We, uh, we really do appreciate that. Some nice positive reinforcement. Nice positive reinforcement. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, you know, I've never thought of that. But, you know, those, you, if, if you're speaking a different language, I guess you have to learn other mnemonic devices or just, just memorize stuff. Yeah, mnemonic devices have helped me through most of my student career. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that's what we, you know, um, in our primarily English-speaking country, you know, that's how we t begin teaching, you know, uh, children at young ages. You know, every, every good boy does fine is the lines on the treble staff. And, yep. You know, so. Hey, Emmanuel, here's something cool. Emmanuel is our first listener mail from Argentina. Really? The first one ever? Yeah. Yay, you remember how all I knew about Brussels, uh, Belgian, was uh, uh, Belgian beer? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here's something I know about Argentina. Some of my favorite wines actually come from Argentina. Very, very good ones. It is a great region for the Malbec grape. Yes, it is. Which is actually a French grape, um, but it seems to really thrive in Argentina. Yes, so. and they have a burgeoning wine industry, and their steaks are fantastic. Ah, Argentine wines and steaks. Check them out, y'all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh man! So there you go. But I ought to. We ought to start a thing where whenever we get a new mail from a new country, I'll I'll learn like that country's uh, uh, learn that country's uh, national anthem and play play it on the. Yeah, I have no idea what Argentina's national anthem is. Sadly, we've done that before with Thailand. Actually, playing chat was yeah, that piece. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so maybe we can start a new thing where I do that. I or or that's cheesy. Or or Chris will will you know enrage at me. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Not cool enough for Chris the coolest. <laughs> uh, hey, we can give you guys a little friendly ribbing back, can't we? Yeah, let's let's hope so. Let's hope so. <laughs> let's okay. maybe delete that part. <laughs> well, maybe so, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the editor finally says about this. Uh, but. Uh, but 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 yeah. Uh, so we're going to hire. A, we we've got an astrophysicist. We need to hire a pianist. Uh huh. Um, you know, maybe a cultural attaché. Well, uh, podcasting is expensive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's good. We're expanding. Yes, we are. So Except so we're... definitely uh, go patreon.com slash music student one hundred one. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, anything you contribute helps us keep doing this. Yeah. Which is something we want to do and are going to do for as long as we can. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, it keeps us keeps us in coffee if nothing else. I'm normally kind of a dull person, but when I drink my coffee before each episode, I'm on fire, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm on fire. Need that caffeine. Need that caffeine, man. Are we digressing our way out of this episode? Uh, maybe. I'm actually this kind of. I'm actually a little bit um, confident about this episode. Jeremy's fired up. Jeremy gets to do more uh, dictation. Jeremy torture, as I call it. Jeremy torture. Yeah. And it's getting harder on him. It is. So uh, he's going to need some caffeine for this one. So here's what I think we do, which we, we pretty much do every episode. We, we talk about the chords, and then mm -hmm. we play some examples, and then I'm on the hot seat. Mm, hey, you indeed you I'll are. I'll do four examples, two in major, two in minor. Indeed, you, indeed you are. And, um, and we'll see how I do. We'll see how you do. <clears throat> and if I do horribly, I'll edit it to where I do wonderfully. Because <laughs> we don't want you to listen to all that garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to listen to Jeremy's uh, huge roiling mistakes. That's that's the Matt torture. But, but. we ha <laughs> Matt torture. We have gone back and made it changes to episodes in the past, and that's not something I'm afraid to do. Right. At first, I was mortified of it. It's like <laughs> you put out the word, that's it, that's all. Yeah. But now I'm finding there's places where I mispronounce people's names and so forth and so yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, you are digressing at this point. We are talking so, about so. the secondary seven chord. And hearing them. And hearing them. And hearing them in a chord progression. So this is a harmonic progression episode. Mm -hmm. And we are going to focus in this episode on two particular secondary seventh chords. Mm -hmm. And just as a recap, you'll remember that by secondary seventh chords, we're talking about a seventh chord that tonicizes a scale degree other than one. Mm -hmm. So just like a secondary dominant chord... Uh, where we sort of make a five to lead to, uh, to the, a five that will lead to five or four or two. Mm -hmm. A secondary seventh chord is making a seven chord that will resolve a half step up, but to a diatonic scale degree like five or four. So you have seven of five, seven of six, seven of two. And obviously this won't be a chromatic, this, this will be a chromatic chord. 
this will be a chromatic chord, yeah. So we're pulling in, uh, like like all secondary chords, seventh and dominant. We are we are sort of pulling in notes from outside of our key, which is what chromaticism is, to to create these chords, mm -hmm. and it, it gives it a little extra color and extra flavor and extra um, kind of crunchiness. Yeah, is the word I use a lot. Crunchiness. Yeah. And uh, definitely check back that episode on secondary seventh chords, the theory of, uh, if you feel you need to. Yes, because we do play musical examples in that, too, don't we? We do. And yeah. we're going to do more of that today. But that is episode 55, if you're curious. Yes. So, so definitely maybe listen to that if you haven't yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so once we know what those are, uh, that's never enough. Uh -huh. We have to know what they sound like. Yes, we do. So, so here we go. Um... Should I just start playing some examples? Let's see here. I guess maybe maybe we'll spend the first little bit. We're gonna we're, there's four main things we're gonna talk about here. Okay. Okay. The seven of five. Yes. In major, seven of five in minor. Mm -hmm. Seven of two in major. Mm -hmm. Seven of two in minor, which I'll have some questions about. Okay. But we'll do that. We'll save that for last. I know what your questions are, and I'm already formulating an answer. All right. We'll save that for last, though. So let's okay. start off with um, seven of five in major. Let's start off with seven of five in major. Mm-hmm. You may remember that when we were talking about just diatonic chords, just like the five chord mm -hmm. and the seven chord that are our two chords of dominant function, that these chords are very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. That in fact, the, the seven triad is just the five seven chord without scale degree five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so... It is very much like that when you talk about secondary seven chords. It, uh, a seven of five is very similar to a five of five. It's just missing a particular scale degree, mm -hmm. uh, two in that case. But that's not even really important. Uh, what's really important is hearing the difference between a seven chord and a five chord. Okay. A chord that is a stable-ish five seven chord, which sounds a little flavorful, a little spicy, a little crunchy, and a seven of five chord, which is going to sound a little more spicy or a mm. little more crunchy. Crunchy. So, yeah. so the idea is uh, to, to really get down and sort of like when you're tasting a fine wine and you can, you can you know, uh, taste, uh, you know, uh, hints of, of earthiness or, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, flavors of plum or stuff like that. This is it, a Malbec, this is a Cab Sag. Exactly, yeah. You're getting really down into, this is this is a level of flavorfulness that, that sounds like a seven chord. Mm -hmm. It's not something anyone can do the first time they ever try to do it. It takes practice. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over that one, y'all. Yeah, yeah, it takes practice. Uh, there are some many fine musicians that would probably be challenged to, to pull that off. In the pop scene, I don't think anyone ever has because I googled secondary seven chords in pop music and just nothing, just yeah. nothing. It's kind of a classical music. The whole idea of the whole idea of uh, dissonance and resolution is is kind of fundamentally a classical music thing, right? You know, because in, in popular music, it's more of a chord as a coloration. You know, a chord that has its own particular flavor, and you're sort of adding that flavor to your a uh, piece of music is kind of more the mentality. So popular music, you have a tendency to be talking more about just a seven chord, mm -hmm. right? So so in our laboratory environment, as this is... In our laboratory-like set, setting. Before we even get into the secondary seven chords, can we hear mm -hmm. in major like a one, two, five, one? Yes. And then a one, two, seven, one. Let's see if we can do this. So, and I'm pro I'll, I'll, I'll give you a heads up. I'm probably going to stay mostly in C major for this episode. Because <laughs> let's not worry about all that other stuff yet. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, good old C major. And we're going to do what? We're going to do uh, one. And for the sake of uh, voice leading, I'm going to make this a two six. Okay. So we're going to do... Uh, two in first inversion. Right, yeah. So... With a third in the bass. Right. So I'm going to go uh, one, two, five, uh, five, one. Request. Yes. Can we can we bring that bass down an octave? Yeah. So I can kind of tell a little bit okay. better. We yeah, talked yeah. about All tighter right. chords. <laughs> so we're going to be we're going to be doing uh, one 
Yeah. And two six. And then five. And then one. Hmm. Very kind of, very bland, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but very America. gratifying. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Gratifying. A good, perfect, authentic cadence has always got a sense of uh, gratification in it. But, mm-hmm. um, but just in terms of like the chord qualities, you know, the, the flavors there. So we're just. I mean, this is just a major chord, and this one's just a minor, and then another major, kind of, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also uh, one, two, six, seven, five. Right. So one. Two six and uh, seven one. Mm. Yeah. Little better. Had a diminished chord in it. Yeah, but it yeah. still felt very fivey. Yeah, one more time with that one. 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 Two, two six. six. Seven. What was happening in that bass? Was that an inversion on the seven chord? No, that was a root position seven. Okay, so totally just seven resolving to one. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, I did, uh, I may have a little bit created uh, parallel octaves up here in my, with my thumb, mm-hmm. just, just for the sake of you hearing that, the quality of that seven chord. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are our diatonic chords. A little bland, you know, a uh, little uninteresting. We've learned kind of already that if we use a secondary dominant chord, so rather than two six, I'm going to do uh, five six of five, mm. right? And we're still to, inverted. Still, yeah, it, for the sake of voice leading, you know, uh, let's not be afraid of inversions. And a cool bass line. Yeah, so, uh, right? <laughs> uh, one, five six, five of five, five six of five. Mm. Yeah, that's a little. Right, you know, if I get the, and then um, yeah, five six five of five, five, and one. That so, had more color and intrigue. Yeah. Um, So, so we're getting a little better. If I if I even got a little more adventurous and did five six five of five, so a five seven of five in an in inversion. Ah, okay. Uh, um, let's see if I can even pull that off. Yeah, I can pull that off. Full on major minor. And I had to change my voice leading a little bit to to resolve that leading tone. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a little crunchier. Yeah. Right. And so this this ability to sort of hear how crunchy is this is important yeah. to this idea. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the five of five really kind of is, is the, the two becoming a major chord, mm-hmm. a borrowed chord. Yeah. From, from nothing. From nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do we explain that actually? Not so, that this is an episode on five of five, but yeah. if we want to so say on, that again, yeah. So like a two, a five of five is really a two chord, yeah. But instead of the diminished or the minor, a chromatically altered two chord, chromatically altered, yeah. So, so so the third of that two chord is raised a half step. Mm-hmm. So rather than D minor, we're playing D major, mm-hmm. which is then a five of five in the key of C. Yeah. yeah, F becomes F sharp. Right. Four becomes sharp four. Very good. Yeah. So, um, seven to five then. Uh, crunchier still. Uh, one. Uh, come on. Yeah. All right. One. Seven of five. Hear that diminishedness? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My mind goes to the handlebar mustache guy tying the girl to the railroad right, tracks. Yeah. Anytime yeah, I hear yeah, it, yeah. that's where I try and hear those diminished yeah. chords. And again, you're really just kind of missing one note. You're just missing that scale degree two from the uh, from the five of five, from the five five six five of five. That this is a five six five with D with scale degree two. Uh huh. And with and five seven to five. 
No, no D, right? F sharp A C and F sharp. You know, um, uh, yeah, or you know, sometimes if it's a seven seven to five scale to be six. This is actually a seven seventh chord you just did, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a seven seven of five. That's what I'm a little worried about in dictation. But you're yeah. not gonna maybe tell you uh, if it is a secondary seven seventh chord, what kind of seventh chord it is, like fully diminished versus half diminished. Are, are you? you? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Pay more attention. Crunchier here. still, right? Yeah, crunchier still. Yeah. So, all right. You ready for some of these? No, actually, we we still need to do. We uh, <laughs> need more ear training as possible. Um, seven of five in minor. Seven of five in minor. Uh, same basic principles will apply. Uh huh. Right. So, um, minor chord. What key are we in? We are in C minor. Oh wow. Okay. So, uh, let's see how I did this. Yeah. All right. So C minor. Mm. Oh wow, that was quick. Yeah. So that, that was that in fact one to seven of five. Yes. To five. Yeah. Now when you did this five, this was a dominant five, wasn't it? Uh. Like a borrowed five, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a major five, which is in classical music anyway is uh, conventional. And really more common than a minor five, I, I think. In classical music, yes. Yeah. Now in in uh, in uh, popular music, not as much. So with a minor five this time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That minor five really does lack a resolution. The missing the half step resolution up to the tonic does rob it of that sense of forward motion. That's what it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for our purposes for this exercise, should I be listening for either minor five or major five? Let's say for the purposes of this ex exercise, I'm going to play minor. I'm going to play major five in the minor, in the minor key. Okay. Which in in classical music, at least, like I said, is is the convention. Well, can I hear that one more time then? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Minor. Yeah. yeah. Turn that smile upside down. One. Uh huh. Yeah. Seven seven of five. Weirdness. And weirdness. Uh, major five to one. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Good piano playing, Matt. <laughs> oh, stop it, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's um there's kind of an example of seven of five in major and seven of five in minor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, using more of the dominant five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about this two. Let's see what what we got in major. Seven of two in major. Seven of two in major. Let's see if I can even get that going. Yeah, all right, so. Yep. Back to C major. Yep. Uh, one. Seven, six of two. Uh, to two, six. Mm. To five. You said that two was also in first inversion. Yeah. Okay. Also cool. in first inversion. Okay. Just because it makes it easier on me and my trying to do good par uh, void parallel fifths and octaves off the top of my head. Because right. at first I was like, Matt, why the hell would you do that seven diminished chord in first inversion? It's already enough math in your head to even pull off a seven of chord. But I'm glad you did, and I'm impressed. Oh, uh, don't be impressed. Don't be impressed. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time, can we? Yeah. Sure. All right. Major key. One. Uh, seven six of two. Uh, mm. Two six. Two five. Two one. That flowed very nicely, I think. Yeah, yeah. It Pretty almost good. sounded diatonic for a second. <laughs> good voice leading. Uh, to do the best it's going to get. <laughs> okay. So, um. Now here is where we run into a little bit of funniness. This is going to be, if this is even a thing we can do. Yeah. The seven of two in minor. Why is that weird? 
Uh, because you are technically resolving to a core that is itself diminished. Yeah. And can you do that? I'm going to go ahead and say you can do that. The okay. question is, how do you explain it? Uh-huh. And the way you explain it is this is an element of, of uh, voice leading. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, you cannot tonicize a two chord, uh, but you can move to a two chord. Uh-huh. And that two chord is itself going to move to something else. So this is a this is a function of counterpoint, really. This is a function of voice leading. What you have is two diminished chords in a row before either one of them resolve. Is that the same as a chain of seven secondary sevens? It's chords? similar. Okay. It's a similar idea as a chain of secondary sevens or any chain of continuous seventh chords, which as you approach the 19th century, get more and more common. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it kind of leads to a lot of these rules sort of getting abandoned mm. for very much the, the, the reason that people hearing these all the time get less committed to ideas like, well, you know, everything has to be taught, has to, you know, resolve immediately. And yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I, should we, I guess we should still include this then, shouldn't we? Uh, we can. I don't know how we're going to work it in. <laughs> we don't have to include every single possible example of everything. Oh, no, but, no, no, no. <laughs> but since we just talked about it. But the more obscure things, I, c- I think it's, it's worth listening it gets, to. It gets more interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, C minor. Uh-huh. Uh, seven of, uh, seven, six of two, I hope. Yep. Uh to two. Mm. Yeah. That is diminished. To five. So you did do it. You did pull it off. And it sounded okay. You can okay. do anything. The question is, how do you explain it? <laughs> but it sounded okay. Yeah. Uh, really. I, I thought I could listen for weird, total weirdness and be okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that's the seven chord, but I, I don't know. Things got a little foggy. A little blurry. Well, there were two seven chords in a two diminished chords at least in a row, right? So, mm. um, one, mm-hmm. seven, six of two, two, mm. five, one, and again that was the major five. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's a function of the voice leading uh, more than anything else. This, uh, for lack of a better term, this alto voice. Yeah, is yeah you know, with that half step with that flat you know so it is it's not so much a a product of harmonic function as the product of this voice leading um, Kind of that kind of sound going on. Very simple melody, very digestible. Yeah, yeah. something I could probably notate if I had to. Yeah, altos never get the good stuff. Uh, it's, it's it's a common complaint. What's that? Altos never get the good stuff. Oh yeah, they're just moving back and forth to, between a couple of notes. And yeah, do they have a funner job than the bass though? Uh, yes. Yes. No. 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 Wait. No. Like, I mean, the bass is jumping around all, all over the place. We get the jump. So we, we get a little bit of basses moving in fifths is, is you know, almost analogous to the upper voices moving by step. You know? I see, I see. But yeah, so, so there you go. Okay, now here's another funny theory question that some people might, might be thinking about. Yeah. Actually, I never even thought about this until I was just last night when I was going over the notes. Um, in minor, mm-hmm. two is a diminished chord. So say we're in A minor. Let's yep. say simple A, easy to, to get A minor. Okay. So, in A minor, the B diminished chord is two. Right. But that is butt up right next to the three. Mm-hmm. And so, 
B diminished is 7 of C. Right. But in the case of this minor key, we're not going to call it that. Yeah. Unless there's some kind of modulation or what. So the question is, well, would you call that 7 of 3? Yeah, because a 2 seems like it could easily just be considered because it's diminished and minor yes. specifically. Yeah. It's diminished and it, it leads right into that. It right. can resolve right to that major right, yeah. three chord. Well, again, yeah, the, again, the question is always, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. right? And to answer that question well, you've got to be thinking about why you're calling something what you're calling it. Why, would you call, why are you calling it two or might call it two versus why you might call it seven of three? Mm -hmm. If that diminished chord, is in fact resolving to three. So if that B diminished chord resolves up to C, scale major. degree three, yeah. and then it continues in A minor, we're not talking about a, a modulation to the relative okay. major or anything. We're still, okay. Yeah, it, 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 if, it, if it moves and resolves up to C, then you've got a really strong case for calling that seven of three uh -huh. based on where it resolves. This is a, set, this is a diminished chord. The resolves up to a chord based on scale degree three. Ergo, this is seven of three. Hmm. Now, if that two diminished chord does what it's going to do more often and go to five, you know, then then this is a chord that is displaying predominant function. Mm -hmm. This is much more a uh, a chord that I would call two, and I would call it two. Not I would not say seven of three to five. I would say two to five. Mm -hmm. Right. So so it, it's. It's a question. It's a lot of times. It's a question of where it moves, and a lot of questions. A lot of times, a question of what is it doing? Where you get these? Where where you get these distinctions? So um, it's really more about the function. Yeah, the exact same chord, two different functions, depending on where it goes. Absolutely. Or what mm -hmm. happens before or after it? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I may have brought this up before. I know a professor of mine once said, "You don't. You don't just." Put chords together and make a piece of music any more than you stack up beef tips and make a cow. That's one of my favorite right? ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's not just that this chord has this role and we're going to slap it in when we need it and then we're going to slap the next chord behind it and chord and chord. You know, chords are a result mm. of counterpoint, mm. a result of voice leading, a result of soprano, alto, tenor, bass moving in certain ways. So that chord is either two, depending on where it moved, or a seven of three, depending on where it moved. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, um, there we go. Good stuff. <laughs> two, seven of five in major and minor? Yep. Seven of two in major and minor. In major and minor. Yep. Okay, Matt. Okay. Dr. Phillips. Yes, sir. I have my notepad here. Uh-huh. My music notation, and I have pre-written my clefs, my treble clef, my bass clef, my staves. Such a well-prepared student. Well-prepared this time. You don't have to hear me. You'll still hear me erasing furiously. But um, I guess we're ready to get into this now. All right. So we're I'm just going to play a chord progression. Okay. And you tell me what chord progression you heard. And are you going to give me the key and the starting note? I will. So like I said, uh, for the sake of simplicity this time, because we are talking about some pretty complicated stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll probably be in C major a lot. Fine with me. <laughs> So uh, here we go. Oh, and also we should say uh, kind of the the um, the method we use to do this. Mm -hmm. We have maybe four listens, right? Yeah. In my case, it might be five or seven, <laughs> five to seven listens. But what we try and do during the first listen, yeah, we listen for the bass. We listen for the bass voice. That's kind of the tell-all foundation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And and I don't know. To some, maybe easier to hear. I shouldn't say that. To, some, yeah. Well, no. To some, it is. Yeah. Not to everyone, but to some, it definitely is. Especially if you spread them out on the piano. Like mm. that. <laughs> um, and then the second listen, we listen for the melody, the soprano yeah. voice. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what I noticed that's kind of funny? What's that? You say soprano. I, I say, say soprano. soprano. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. And then the third listen. We are actually trying to listen for qualities, or, or, or what was the... Yeah, try to listen, yeah, the quality of the chord, whether it be major, minor, diminish, how crunchy is it? How crunchy is it, yeah. Yeah. And then hopefully by the fourth listen, we are kind of ready to put all that together. Kind of in confirmation mode. Yeah, and in and uh, somewhere between three and four, we're sort of engaging our theory brain mm -hmm. to decide what inversion that 
is, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. You ready? I think so. Okay. Let the torture begin. <laughs> so here we are. We're in C major. Lucy from London. I hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. We're in C major. Right, good old C major. Mm-hmm. So our top voice is scale degree three. And a good old E. Our, that's our soprano. Our uh-huh. bass voice is uh, our roots, or our tonic, C. Good old C. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Yes. Here we go. Do I normally count these off? You don't have to. Okay. Here we go. Nice. Very good start. Just four chords. Just, I well, think. it was five chords. Was it? Did I miss something? Well, I'm going to play it again, please, sir. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry. One. Just five chords. You're going easy on me. Thank you. Going a little easy on you, yeah. Okay, well, here's what I think I thought I heard. Okay. In this first listen, in the bass. Would you like to play along as I say it? Yes. In case I get it right? (laughs) Okay, we start off with that C in the bass. This is scale degree one. One. The next thing that happens, I feel like it moved up to four. Up to the G, or F, I guess. F, yeah. F, yeah. And then I think that four, for the next chord, I think we just sharpen that to where it's an F sharp. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. And then that was able to resolve up to the G, five, and then back down to one. Very good. Okay, so I got the bass line. Yeah. Hot dog. (laughs) Ready to work on that melody, that soprano line? Yes, please. We're going to start off with a third. Yeah. Can you play that full chord? Now if I sing that high, highest note, I sing that and I count down. So I know that we start on three. Yeah. Counting down has really saved a lot of my uh, skin <laughs> in these exercises. Great little trick, isn't it's it? Great trick. All right. So we got so, three. Same chord progression. Here mm-hmm. we go. Pretty sure I got the third one wrong, but let's try this. Okay. We start off on that third. And I want to say we move down to just a straight up two. Mmm. Oh, that was a one. Nah, 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 nah. What direction are we moving? Oh, I was listening to the wrong note. Very easy to do. Oh Lord! It okay. probably wouldn't have. It probably wouldn't have interfered with you getting the chords, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Okay, so instead we went. Um, the uh, three went up to four. Right. Because it still sounds pretty diatonic. Here. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this third chord, mm-hmm. the soprano line. Let's hear that again. So um, so far we've got. Uh huh. Ah, uh aha. That is a two. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then next, you can play the chords if you want to. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Stayed where it was, didn't it? Stayed where it was. And then back up to three. Which, always remember that it, staying where it was is an option. People forget, a, forget about that as an option. In voice leading? Yeah. And, f- and, in, and in dictating 
uh, melodies in harmonic dictation. It's easy to forget, especially when you hear something moving. Yeah. It's easy to forget that, that you know, a, a line can definitely stay where it is. Yeah. And in this case, uh, that, that melody line, is it, it did do that. Yeah. So where did it end? Yeah, I, I, it ended right where it started, I think. Right, yes, it the, did. On the three. Yes, it did. On that E note. Okay, yeah, so we got so. three, four, two, two, three. Okay. Yeah. So far, so good. So far, so good. Now it's time to start thinking about crunchiness. Crunchiness or What's, not crunch. To crunch yeah, or not what, to crunch. What some of these chords might be. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Now there's one major. <laughs> I feel pretty, pretty good about that. Now this here. Oh, wait. You just, you just play it and then we'll talk it, right? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Okay, man. Okay, I got it. I got it. I think I got it. Okay. Okay, so first chord. One major. Ma yeah, start with the easy stuff. Okay, next chord. Uh, uh. We know that we have a four in the bass, and we also have a four in the soprano. Yes. And it sounds very major. Yes. So I'm going to stick with a four chord on that right. one. You don't think it's a two six? Let's hear it again. Nope, I don't think it's a two yeah, all right. Can't fool you. Yeah, no, <laughs> four. Good. Now, this is where I, I heard crunchiness. Mm hmm. And I want to say this is probably our seven of seven chord. Mm hmm. Our secondary seven chord. Mm hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Except. That doesn't sound as crunchy as your run-of-the-mill diminished chord. There's, right. That sounds a little more 570. Yeah. So what are you doing here, Matt? Are you messing with my head? Yes, I am. Okay. Next chord. Okay, that's very 5 -y. Yeah. And next. We confirm that because it goes to 1. It goes to 1, yeah. So good, imperfect, authentic cadence. So here we are in an episode on secondary 7th chords, mm -hmm. but you're going to be a stinker, aren't you? I'm not going to let you make assumptions. No, okay. So what really happened was... 1. 1. 4. four. 5, 7 of 5. Actually, 5, 6, 5 of 5. Yeah. So in that fourth listen, you know, engage your theory brain a little bit. What inversion of that chord is going to have the F sharp in the bass? And that's going to be 5-6-5. Five, five, in the right? key of C, yeah. 5 is G. Yes. The 5 of G is D. Yes. D, F sharp, A. Right. F sharp is the third. F, F sharp. sharp is in the bass. Ergo, 5-6-5. Five, 5-6-5. Six, five. Five, six, five. Yeah. yeah. First inversion, 5 chord. Yep. 5-7 chord. Yeah. And then from there, it's pretty easy, right? Yeah, that, five. Uh, that bass sneaks up yeah. to the 5 from F sharp, like and, I said earlier. Yep. And, and then back down to 1, so... One, so one, four, five, six, five, of five, five, one. And because in my head I said we're doing an episode on secondary seven chords, yeah, I just immediately when I heard a little bit of crunchiness, I just assumed yeah. shame on me. Yeah, I yep. assumed a diminished yep, seven yep, chord. Yep. I am being a little mean. You're keeping me on my toes. Yeah, I am keeping you on your toes. I am keeping you on your toes. The school of hard knocks. <laughs> Dr. Well, Phillips, you know, school of hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is to be able to hear these, right? Uh -huh. uh, uh, removed from context to hear, well, that's five, seven, or five, or that's you know, something else, right? So mm -hmm. not, not to be like, well, I know what this is because I'm in this class or because this is the name of the episode. So, mm -hmm. But... Yes. Yes, this is an episode on that, so therefore it must be that. <laughs> right, That's yeah. That's good. I appreciate that, Matt. So let's, to be a little less mean. Okay. Let's do it. Let, let's do one that's very similar. Uh -huh. But let's do this. Ready? Okay. Same mm -hmm. bass and tenor, or mm -hmm. soprano? Yeah, same bass, uh -huh. C. Okay. Same soprano, E. Uh-huh. Second example. Yeah, second example. Here we go. Ready? Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
gosh, did that baseline do the exact same thing? Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking the baseline did. Okay. If memory serves and if my ears are working the way I'd like them to today. Okay. We have C, which is the root, which is one. One. Next chord. We can play the chords with it if you want to. Oh, all right. All right, so. So. Mm, there's one. Four. And then that four raises up just a little bit to sharpen to a sharp four. Yeah. Continuing to move chromatically up to the five. Mm -hmm. And then finally. One. Okay, so in the bass line we have one, four, sharp four, five, one. Same thing we had last time. Yes, very good. What's going to be different? Let's see. Now we're going to listen for the soprano line. The top, okay. the uppermost voice. The uppermost voice. Ready? Mm hmm. Lost it. There's a good reason why you probably lost it. Why is that? Other than me just not being a ear training genius. Well, I'll, I'll give you a hint. In this particular example, that upper voice introduced some chromaticism. Mm. Yeah. So this is where your ability to melodically dictate is going to come in handy. Yeah. So you probably heard, and I don't have to belabor the point, that it started off pretty similarly. Yes. So E on the three. Yeah. Okay, so still up to scale degree four. Uh huh. And from there, mm. this is outside of our key. Mm hmm. Yeah. So think about where this goes. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay, here's what I think happened. Okay. We had three in the, of course, the first chord. We got scale degree. Oops. Scale degree three. Mm hmm. Moves up to four. Now, it's going to do something funny here, and I think it's just a sharp two. No, that's a leading tone. Well, sharp two might be a leading tone, but flat three, which is the same note. Ah, ha, ha, ha. flat three is not going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to resolve down. So I'm going to change that to a flat three instead of a sharp two. Yeah, there you go. What's with my always just wanting to use sharps? Is it's a guitar levels. player thing. It's a guitar player thing, is it? <laughs> yeah. And bass player. Yeah, Fine. and bass player. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Shoot. Okay. And then it went down. And then it went down to two, right? Yep. Yep. And then back up to one. To three. To three, yeah. Scale degree three. Back up to three. Tonic chord. Yeah. Yeah. So we know that's a one. Yeah. We still know we have bookends, one chords. <laughs> now is the time, I guess, where we listen for quality, the third listen. Quality and crunchiness. Yeah. So God, should we should we just do that that soprano line one more time so people can listen? Now I'm all paranoid about people being able to hear our progressions. <laughs> can we hear it one more time? Yeah. So the soprano line. Pretty complicated, isn't it? Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Third listen. Third listen. Here we go. Ah ha ha ha. <laughs> Uh, when I'm, I might be hearing the true crunch that I thought I was hearing earlier. Uh, the true crunch that yeah. I wasn't hearing in earlier. comparison. In comparison. <laughs> okay, so let's. I think we had very much the same thing with one difference, and that uh -huh. would be the third chord in the okay. progression. Okay, so. So major one. Mm hmm. Four chord root position. Major four. Major four. Now, again, this is our chromatic moment. Yeah. I'm hearing crunchiness. I'm hearing weirdness. I feel like I'm not in Kansas anymore. Uh, and I guess 
since I am not filling out these middle voices, yeah. like maybe I probably should be able to, uh, um, I can still deduct what I hear to be a diminished chord from, from that. Yes, yes, there's the man on the railroad track. Yeah, so that's a diminished chord. Uh-huh. Moving to what is pretty obviously five, right? If I didn't, if I heard the next chord, I would probably know for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's definitely five to one. So what we in fact heard was a one, mm -hmm. four, yeah. seven of five. Seven of five. To five. Yeah. To one. One, yeah. And on our fourth listen, let's think about, engage our theory brain, think about some inversions. Mm, okay. So root position one. Yes. Root position root four. Position four. Now we're gonna pause for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that bass line? Mm -hmm. Well, this is why you write it before, so you've got it written down there. So that is an F sharp. Yeah. Um, in the key of C, which is chromatic. Yeah. And then we say the seven in the key of C major. Mm-hmm. The seven of the five chord is gonna be like a sharp four bass thing, like F, yeah. F sharp diminished chord. Yeah. So we are in fact looking at an F sharp. So there we have a root position seven chord. Now, mm. the question is, is this a seven seventh chord or is this just a regular three, like a triad, diminished triad? Take a look at that weirdness that happened in the soprano. Okay. Yes, let us not um, leave out the soprano. Um, you got an F sharp with an E flat in there. Mm. So what uh, what chord tone is E flat in an F sharp diminished chord? That is a diminished seventh relationship. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Is this just a triad? This sounds to me like a diminished seven chord, rather a fully diminished seven chord. Yeah. Going to five. Going to five. Because it's a seven of five. Yes. And then and going then, to one. And then ending on one. Let's do it again and I'll call them out. Okay. So we got one, four, seven of five fully diminished in root position, five, good old one. All right. Yeah, see? Not that's, bad, huh? That's not bad. Not bad. And you see now maybe a little bit the method of my madness, how much easier it is to hear that that's, that diminished seven chord is a diminished seven when compared to the somewhat blander five of five, mm -hmm. right? But your five of five was slightly less bland because it was a five, seven of five. Right, yeah. Well, but yeah. if you listen to these two exercises back and forth, back to back, you yeah. can actually be able to really determine hopefully the difference between a five, seven of five yeah. and a seven of five. Yeah, and that that's the real trick. Because right. it's, it's pretty easy to hear dominant function moving to five. Yeah. You know, what, what's, what's more difficult is what kind of dominant function moving. Because I heard the resolution and I was like, yeah. boom, that's our seven. That's yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. So, but I was a little bit off that time. You know? Yeah, yeah. So so we'll we'll do another one in major. Okay. Good old C major. Good old C major. And uh I might try to make this one a little bit uh a little bit tougher on you. Oh, is it? Uh, just a little bit. Oh, hit me. Let's All see right. what you got. Here we go. Ready? Hit me with your best shot. <laughs> All right, we're not going to play that, but... <laughs> so, good old C major. You're just establishing the key, aren't you? I'm just establishing the key, yeah. Very good. <laughs> so, our bass note is C. Mm -hmm. Our soprano note, also C. Oh. Very cool. Yep. So, ready for this? I think so. Here we go. I'll try to play slow, too. Please. <laughs> Do not be alarmed. Follow your same 
principle. So we're listening for that bass line. And I think I'm going to need that again, honestly. Here we go. Surely some of our listeners could use that again, right? <laughs> so one more time. Okay. Okay. I notated this wrong, but I got the right idea. Okay. Let me try and fix this here. I am well, not sure if I heard any chromaticism in the bass line. You may not have. Okay, let's try it. Let's see if let's see if I got this. You All ready? Right. So you just call out the notes and I'll just play it and it'll, we'll see if it sounded like the bass line I played. How about that? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you say something wrong, it's going to sound wrong. So. Okay. It's like the Goonies. Do you want the num notes and numbers or the notes and notes? Uh, let's do the numbers. Okay, so we got one, five, six, back down to five, four, five, one. Perfection. <laughs> Absolute perfection. Good times, man. Some neighbor notes around five there. Okay, now mm -hmm. that was almost too easy. <laughs> so now I'm really worried because you said it was going to get it more more difficult. So so let's pay attention to this uh, soprano line this time, right? Okay. Starting on this high C. Mm -hmm. Ready? <laughs> right, let me try that again. You get a free listen. Feel like um six seven one was the ending of that. Ooh, yeah, huh? Okay, that's a good practice too. If you feel confident about the last three notes, go ahead and write them down. Right? Yeah, and then spend some time concentrating on. Because I heard a sequence that I kind of a melodic sequence that mm -hmm. I recognize. Latino. Yeah, 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 killer. <laughs> okay, then. So here's what I think happened, and honestly, according to what I have here, and I could be wrong, but I don't think that there was any chromaticism. And the soprano line, shall we? We'll see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to play the chords or just the notes? As I'll call just them? play the notes and see how, how good you did. Okay, so we're right. starting off with one. Yep. Seven. One. Seven. Six. Seven. One. Is that what you did? Very do? good. One little, uh, one tiny, tiny little error. I bet you I know what that is. What is it? I bet you the second time I said seven, it might not have actually been a seven. Uh, what might it have been? Might have been some kind of um, chromatic thing. So, so we got one, seven, hmm? one. Ah, six, or. Eh. Or what happened was this thing was probably a flat something because maybe it went down. Mm -hmm. It went down. Okay. And it went down to six, so it has to be a flat seven. Flat seven. How crazy. B flat. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, I think you did pretty good, right? So from flat seven down to six. Uh-huh. So you got this kind of lay soul thing, but around six. Mm-hmm. So... And then your sequence from there. Yeah, and then six, six to seven. Seven. Diatonic seven. Diatonic seven. And then leading tone, yeah. leading up to one. Yeah, Resolve and probably one. shouldn't call that a sequence because it's, it's just a, it's just a melodic motion up. But, mm -hmm. but we get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. A collection of notes. I recognize that collection of notes. Yeah. When I hear them together. So now, let's start listening for where our crunchiness is. Okay. This is when we're going to turn on our theory brain, right? 
a little bit. You could go ahead and be you know, letting it boot up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ready? Yes, sir. What's happening here? So what shall we do? Shall shall you call it out while I say the chords I think I'm hearing? Let's or do that. Or just qualities, just qualities. Yeah, let's just do qualities. Sure. Okay, cool, cool. So major. It's a major chord. It sounds major, but it also sounds. Do I think that's the dominant seven chord. Okay. This sounds like our old friend, the deceptive cadence, happening for a brief second here. Except yeah. it's not at the end of a piece. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's it's minor chord. Then. But I recognize that one five six thing. Yeah. Minor. Sorry. Yeah. Minor. Minor. Um. Next. Uh, yes. Okay. That's diminished. That is diminished. Yeah. Earlier, I wanted to call this. A four, but now I'm hearing a minor yeah. tonality here. So, so assuming we're that's that, yeah, okay, that's minor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Major. Yep, yeah. and then that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, that's back on the tonic resolution. Yep. In fact, a perfect authentic cadence. In fact, a perfect authentic cadence. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to call this what I think it is. Okay, so let's go. I don't know if I'm ready for the inversions, but we'll see. <laughs> it's okay. okay so this is the one chord. One. Um. And we got a five seven chord. Deceptively resolving to a six chord. Deceptively resolving to a six chord. Because I've heard that progression a million times. Yeah. And then. Now that bass line is going down from the six to the five. Yeah. So I know that that's not the seven of two in first and in, in root position. In fact, that is a that that note would be the third of the seven chords. So that's actually seven six. Yeah. But is it a seven six five? Ooh. No, I think that's just a triad. Mmm. So se so seven six. Seven six. Of of two. Of two. Moving minor two to two, but two or with the F in the bass. Oh, then that would certainly be a first inversion. That's a two six chord. Yes, so seven six of two to two six. Uh huh. Two five <laughs> five one five to one. Yeah, great. We did it. Yeah, pretty pretty complicated, huh? Pretty complicated. So one, five, seven, six, seven, six of two, two, six, five, one. Let's play it as, you re as we read it one more time. All right. One, one five, seven, uh -huh. six, seven, six of two, two, six, five. <laughs> One. Nice. Great, man. Okay. Mm. I think we got that. Yeah, pretty good, huh? So far, so good. Yeah, pretty good. So what now? I think we should venture into darker corridors, shouldn't we? Good old minor. Get into the minor scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had something for this. And I'm not even going to ask if you're going to assure me that we're going to do major five <laughs> or minor five. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, see if so... I can figure it out myself. All right. You ready for this? I hope so. So let's be in C minor. I guess it doesn't matter if I'm ready or not. You're just gonna. Because I'm gonna play it. Because you're gonna do it. So okay. we are in C minor. Uh huh. Feeling pretty established in C minor. And we're going to start actually there with the uh, C in the bass and the E flat third in the soprano. Oh gosh, I need to make my uh, key signature here. C minor, three flats. Very good. And then because we know, um, what was it, uh, the order of flats that the, our friend came up right, with? Right, yeah. Emmanuel. 
Yeah, battle ends and down goes Charles's father. Battle ends and. So we have a B flat, an E flat, uh-huh. and an A flat. And an A flat. Okay. And I need to remember that. <laughs> okay. All right. Ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. And we know that we're starting with C in the bass, mm-hmm. the root in the bass, and then that flat third, that minor third. Yep. And then the, and the, and the soprano. Okay. okay. Here we go. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. You want me to play that again a little more slowly? Yeah. I remember... Bass line first. Yes, thinking about that bass line. Okay. Very unusual bass line. It must be, and that's why I think it's what I have here, but Uh there's two things going on in my head. And it's one of these two things. Mm-hmm. The first thing I'm thinking is actually we're hearing a one mm-hmm. to a three. Although, is that a major third from the one? Well, or is ask just... yourself what, what uh, if it's all the way up to three. Yeah, okay, so then it is the second scenario. Yeah. It's just going up, up one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. One, two... Three, three, two, one. Yeah, and like I said, unusual bass line because it's moving in stepwise motion the whole time, right? There's no, there's no leaps of a fourth or fifth. Yeah. So, so unusual bass line. For that. Unusual in that it doesn't have as much of a contour. It's yeah. just straight, straight up. Yeah. And how do we get cool, unusual bass lines? Oh, with inversions. With inversions. All right. So be on the lookout. I'll be on the lookout. I'll be sensitive to that. All right. Now so let's, let's listen to that soprano melody. Oh, let's, let's uh, just to be sure, let me call out the bass line one more time. Okay. Uh, or well, while, while you play it. All right. So this is, you got a one, two, three, three, two, and then one. Very uh, straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Five, six chords here. Yes. Next, we will do the soprano while I listen. The soprano. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Again, I have two scenarios of what might have happened. All right. So give me the one you you feel strongest about. Give me get the one that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hit, hit me, Maestro. All right. We got the flat three starting off. Three. Uh huh. Two. One. One. Now this guy right here. This guy. I uh, two. And then one. I think that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. One quibble I would make is that that second two uh-huh. is actually seven. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Is that it's... your second scenario? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking by it. Yeah. Only, only quibble. So three, mm-hmm. two... One, uh-huh. one, one, seven, seven, leading tone. How the hell didn't I hear that? One. And then back up to one. Yeah. Okay. It's funny how sometimes I hear, hey, just out of curiosity, was there a two note in there? That's a- uh, ooh, uh, yeah. Okay, so but I But def- it was all the way down here in the tenor. Oh, crap. Never mind. There's, there goes that excuse. <laughs> all right. Okay. 
enough monkeying around here. I think All right. I, I got this line here. Let's play it one more time. Okay. So we got a one. I'm sorry, a three. Yeah. Oh, just the melody then. Oh, we can you can play it. We might as well play the chords too. So. Okay. So yeah. Three. Yeah. Okay. There you then. go. Third listen. Third listen. Here we go. Chord qualities, Chord inversions, qual- general levels of crunchiness. Yes, sir. Something's coming together here. Mm-hmm. All right. So what do you think? So we're listening for qualities? Qualities, inversions, if you can name them. Okay. You know, general crunchiness, kind of. Okay. Hit me. We got a... Minor one. Minor one. Root position. Root position. Now this thing right here, because of where it goes, uh-huh. I'm thinking it's just a five and... um. A cadential six four kind of thing, like a five six four, yeah. Five, so six, a five and second inversion. I said cadential six four, but I shouldn't say that because it's not a cadence. What you meant was five passing six four. Ooh, pa- one of okay. the other kinds of six four chords we have. Okay, hey, the main thing is I got the six four chord, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> because it's passing through two different inversions of the same chord. Uh huh. So one. Oh yes, one. Five six four. Five six four. To one in first inversion. Six. Yeah, one, one six. six chord. Yeah. Yeah. And then this happens. Weirdness, crunchiness. Mm-hmm. Any idea of the quality of that chord? I mean, I think that's diminished, but let me hear it. If I move that bass up an octave just temporarily. Uh-huh. Um, I want to say that's more than a triad. Yeah, I, I want to say you're right. So that's a seven chord. Yeah. And the question is, is it in some kind of inversion? Mm, well, I think it is. I believe it is actually in. Um, I now have to do the math here. Mm-hmm. Um, in C minor. Uh huh. The seven of five. Uh huh. Would again be an F sharp diminished uh-huh. kind of situation. Uh huh. And then I'm looking at here an F sharp with a C. No. All cars eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at an F sharp with an E in the bass, an E flat. An E flat. In the bass. Yeah. So again, I think we're back at that um, fully diminished. That's a fully diminished it is seven. A fully diminished seven chord. And with, the, and with the E flat in the bass, uh huh. that leads us to what inversion? Oh, I mean like um, the final inversion. The yeah. F- the four, third inversion. Third inversion. Four, two. Four two, which is something I haven't used in a long time. I know, right? In a long time. I know, right? So seven fully diminished four two mm-hmm. off. What do you think that's off? Well, the next chord. Um, it the next chord is that sounds like a five. Yeah, so maybe seven fully diminished four two of five. Yeah, and then the five is not in first inversion. No, it is not. The or five, root position. It's actually in. Um, Second inversion. Also. Second inversion. So six, Yet four. another passing 6-4, <sighs> this time passing in the other direction, moving to Dude. minor one. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So really unusual bass line that, that I created by using a lot of inversions. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You're always busting out those inversions. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you, you get used to it, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So really cool. Maybe you're a better piano player than some people give you credit for. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I'm definitely, I'm definitely a pretty good theorist. Yeah. Let's say that. Let's put it that way. You never claim to be otherwise, though, Matt. <laughs> so, so let, so then to recap. To recap. So I'll play a fourth listen. Okay. Just for the sake of everybody. Whereupon we'll just or, listen. Yeah. Whereupon we'll just listen and and sort of confirm and decide. Okay. So.
Nice. Yeah. And this time one more, and I'll call it out. Okay. So they can actually. All right. So call it out for these me. things here. Um. Minor one chord. Passing five six four. Mm -hmm. Back to minor one six. That is a one in first inversion. One six. Now we have a seven four th two. Mm -hmm. um, of five. A uh, five. Secondary seven chord of five. Uh huh. And you can't just go to a regular five. You got to get creative with that yeah. bass line. <laughs> and that's a five passing six four also. Moving to one. And yeah. again, was not a minor five. Yeah. Was not a minor five. It was a major. Right. Yeah. Dominant as, five. as is convention. As is convention. Yeah. So. That would have been if I'd have gone to regular five. But. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh. Very sad, very Chopin like, kind of huh. dark and melancholy, right? Kind of funeral march, funeral marchy. Yeah, sort of. Dark Chopin. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I'll tell you what, that was four listens, but I feel like we didn't give minor enough love. Should we do <laughs> one more for the sake of minor? Let's do one more for the sake of minor. Uh, let's see what I can do. Let's see if I can get creative. Don't get too creative. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not get too creative. Let's... All right, so... Oh, this is going to be so good. Uh-oh. You're going you're gonna to like... That. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know what that means for me. <laughs> <laughs> it might sound cool. <laughs> All right, so... Last one. We're in C minor. Is this one going to be a doozy? It might be a little bit of a doozy. Okay. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. No reason to be scared. Okay. Ready? And you know what? This time, let me try and see if I can figure out what that soprano note is. All right. I'm feeling pretty rooted in that bass. Oh, say octave. Yeah. So one. One. Absolutely. Yeah. And the bass is one. And we're still in C minor, right? And we're still in C minor. Okay, so C minor, C in the bass. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready? Listening for that bass line. Okay, here we go. Mm hmm. Fun stuff, bud. Fun <laughs> stuff. I think I got it. Oh, you think you got it, huh? I've thought that before, <laughs> but this time I'm feeling pretty good. So how's that bass line? Okay. So we're going to have... Ooh, I almost made another common <laughs> mistake of mine. Okay. Ready? Yeah. I got uh, one, four. Natural three. Natural three. The flat three is raised. Because I almost said sharp three, but that's BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that... this case, that's why I like raised three. Raised three. Okay. Yeah, but okay. Moving to. Moving to four, where mm -hmm. you think a chromatic uh, thing, yeah. sharp raised thing might go. Yep. And then five. Again, five. And then one. Nice. You'd think I was a bassist. <laughs> All right, let's try that uh, melody line now. Yes, let's find out what not a melody person I am. <laughs> let's see. Here we go. Jeez. <laughs> I'm not sure if I heard the leading tone I was hoping to hear in the uh, soprano. Or did I? Or did you? Am I just crazy? <laughs> or just not that good? <laughs> Hold on. 
I'm erasing things. Okay, one more for me, Matt. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm just going to see what happens here. All right. Okay, so we got the one. and So the first chord. Uh-huh. One. And this is where I wasn't entirely sure, but did it stay on one? Mm. Yes. And then I sense a little bit of chromaticism. I want to say that this is going to be a... Gosh. Like a sharp one. Yeah. Good job. And then it moves up to two. And it moves back down to a regular one. Natural. Raised. No, just... Just one. Just one. No accidentals at all. And then... The seven. And then the one. Mm -hmm. And leading tone seven. Yeah, so that seven is B natural. Which is, diet which is chromatic to the C minor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's a little bit of chromaticism happening. As there. is convention. As is convention. Okay. <laughs> You might have given me a little, might clue you in little, a little hint. Bit. <laughs> okay, killer. But I got it, didn't I? Yeah. Did I? Yep. Amazing, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, so let me call it out one more time while we play the chords so we okay. can kind of get the, those right. hidden notes in so, there. Um, Soprano, we got a one. One. Um, shit, what did I do? Oh, yeah. Sharp one. Two. Melody note. Oh, I'm sorry, the melody note. Yes, uh, leading tone seven. Yeah. Getting ahead of myself. One. Well, did I get that the other one right in that case? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So now it so, is time to listen for quali for qualities and uh, and and general crunchiness and general inversions crunch. if we can start thinking about them. Okay. Ready? Let's, let's see what I got. All right. Minor. Minor. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds crunchy. Mm. I want to say that's a, like a diminished. This might, yeah, railroad track. Okay. Mm. I'm going to say it's diminished. Ooh. Another one. Okay. Minor. Mm -hmm. Major. Just major. Minor. All right. Now let's take what I know about uh, diatonicism. Okay. That's a word. Is <laughs> it that is. a word? Yeah. Okay. Not sure. Cool. Great. <laughs> Seventy-three episodes in. <laughs> okay. I think I know what's going on, bud. All right. I think I got it. Okay. Want to have one more listen for the folks at home? Please. Mm. All right. Without me humming. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see if I got it. All right. First chord. Mm-hmm. Key of C minor, this is our one chord. Yes. Root position. Mm-hmm. Four. Four. Minor four chord. Yep. Diatonic. Four is minor in the bass. Four. Yep. One is in the soprano. Mm -hmm. Those both belong in four, and it sounds minor. Good theory, brain. <laughs> okay. This I know to be a diminished seven chord. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I'll probably know what kind of seven chord this is since I don't know every note inside yeah, it. Yeah, right. By what comes next. Yeah, we, and what comes next is... Uh, what comes next? Another diminished chord. So <laughs> this is back to what we were talking about. Yeah. We are in a minor key. Uh-huh. That is a two diminished. That is a diminished two. Yep. And it is actually in a, an inversion, I believe. Mm-hmm. That would be first inversion. 
Mm hmm. Indeed. Our good old friend 2 6. Yep. Okay. And then. Now we have. Again, the cadence. Now this is the cadential 6 This four. is the cadential 6 4, yeah. Okay, because we are in minor. C minor, we have a G in the bass, which uh, is five. Yeah. Okay, and then what normally comes after the conventional six four is the conventional five. The conventional five. Yeah. And no, I don't hear any um, extra crunch. Nope. Just straight no up extra crunch. smooth. Yeah. Five. And dominant. To one, minor one. Yep. Root position. Yeah. So conventional six four, depending on how. You know, your theory professor likes to say it. You're either one six four five one or five six four to five three to one, or you know, with the little parentheses in the five, whatever. But it's a cadential. It's a cadential six four. Mm. Mm -hmm. And now, can you have a perfect authentic cadence within a cadential six four? A perf a cadential six four will necess almost necessarily. Let's not say that. Let's instead say yes. <laughs> and in this case, we do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we got the root and the soprano line. We got the root and the bass. Yep. We got a five to one. It wasn't a five seven, but it can still be cadential without the five seven. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Perfect authentic. Yes. It can still be perfect authentic. Okay. Yeah. Because the end up with the uh, tonic note in, in both bass and soprano, the the uh, bass note moved from five, scale degree five, to scale degree one, mm -hmm. five one progression. So yeah. Perfect authentic cadence. Okay. You never did tell me exactly what that was a seven of. Did I not? Nope. Oh, seven of two. Seven of two. Yeah, yeah, because it went to two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one. Yeah, I'm sorry. We should do this one yeah, more time, so, shouldn't we? Yeah. One. One. Four. Uh, -huh. uh Seven. Just seven? No seven seven? Uh-oh. See, now this is a case where I think I, wait. No inversion? Oh, uh, okay, okay. Looking at these notes mm -hmm. in the bass line, we have, this is where we're going to use our theory brains again. Yeah. Might be a little slow. <laughs> but um, a slow. we're in C minor. Uh-huh. C minor, two, D, D diminishes the two chord. Uh, yes. So that the seven of that two chord is actually going to be a sharp one. Yeah. Seven. C sharp diminished. C sharp diminished. Yes. So in the soprano, we do have a C sharp, but in the bass, mm -hmm. we're actually looking at... Um, an E natural. Right. E natural. So that would be the seven chord in first inversion. Yeah. And then the question is whether this is a seven chord or not. A seventh, seventh yeah. Yeah. chord, right? <laughs> ah, uh huh, uh huh. Just a triad. Just a triad. Yeah, okay. So Because you did that, and that was nice. Right. Yeah. So from the beginning, then, we have one, uh -huh. four, right? Mm -hmm. Seven, six of two. Seven, six of two. Two, six. Uh huh. One, six, four. Five, one. All right. So, uh,. Without me talking, then. Now, let us see if 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 that was adequate piano playing <laughs> versus conversation on top of piano and examples. I felt like it was. Yeah, I felt like it was. I think we might have been sensitive to that because of how we began this episode. Maybe. But um, just uh, there's there's not going to be any recap on this episode. It was okay. all ear training. But yeah. there is one thing that I do want to say. Uh huh. I came into this episode a little confident because I thought I had a game plan. And you kind of blew it out of the water, Matt. Oh, no. No, no. Well, here's what I was going to say. I was going to say, if I hear anything in a minor key, <laughs> I'm going to know that the example he's giving... <laughs> is going to be a seven of five. Because in my head, you could not do a seven of two. Diminished <laughs> and minor. And yet. And yet. And yet, that last example, we did have a seven of a diminished chord. A, of a diminished two six chord. Indeed. Indeed. So, yeah, man. So, so I'm just stringing together seven chords at this point, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, more, again, again, more of a function of voice leading. So, um, so, uh, you know, the bass and the tenor versus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this uh, chromatic motion up of this, uh, what is this, this uh, tritone. Uh, so, um, hmm. more of a motion of than, than than actual f function. I mean, you can say function. You can say that first diminished chord resolves to the next one. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, as the, really all chords are, a function of counterpoint a function of your voice is moving mm -hmm. you know and and they're uh they're just moving in in logical ways but when that fully diminished se or when that when that seven mm -hmm. diminished seven resolved to a diminished two mm -hmm. it still sounded like it was resolving it, it didn't sound as uh crappy as i thought yeah <laughs> it would so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this means you can actually resolve to a diminished two chord from a seven of two. I don't uh, know. You just don't really want to call it a resolution. Okay, I keep on doing yeah. that, don't I? Yeah. We're just talking uh, about I movement. I mean, I guess that that's kind of one way of sort of picking at the answer. But but you know, you don't necessarily. But but it is entirely, and it does sound satisfying, mainly because uh, uh, because we have. Um, where is it? We have this uh, this kind of uh, very sort of normal motion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I hope that you know this does not now sound like a stable place. Right? No, no, no. So this in itself again has to move, yeah. right? And then even even this uh -huh. isn't really super stable, yeah, right? So, it's, like so it's, 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 it's suspending that resolution for longer. Yeah. And then for that reason, it's kind of more of an arts, artistic sort of creative chord progression because we've managed to suspend this idea of a resolution really up until the final chord. You're suspending the tension. It's suspending the tension, yeah. So this might be a good technique to use for like a soundtrack to like a suspense or movie, murder yeah. movie or something like um, that. Or... Oh, gosh. Makes a great Chopin score. I'm very <laughs> into the Chopin these uh, today. What's not to love about Chopin? <laughs> but yeah, you know, the reason it sounds like that is because as the 19th century progresses, what we call the Romantic era, uh -huh. these kinds of chromatic chords, stringing diminished chords and all together, mm -hmm. suspending the tension for as long as possible, get to be really what the the big boys in the composition world are doing. And yes, they are all boys, unfortunately, <laughs> with with the, with the exception of Clara Schumann. Clara you know. Schumann, yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, we, uh, as that century progresses, this becomes more and more and more of a thing. Having and kind of more color and more drama. More color, more drama, more dissonance and chromaticism. More, you know, the function of the counterpoint creating dissonances that, that, that are taking a long time to resolve properly. Rather than sort of the simple, you know, um, uh, never too far away from a diatonic chord thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, all of our chromaticism chords, Neapolitans and German augmented sixes and all that stuff, become more and more of a thing. And they eventually lead to us saying, is it even necessary that we think of ourselves in a key at all? Or mm -hmm. are we just writing voices in counterpoint? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So... And then that leads to, well, do we have to even write voices in counterpoint? And that leads to the 20th century, and then things start to get <laughs> crazy. But, but yeah. Yeah. Everything kind of goes out the window. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So what's next to talk about? Maybe uh, seven of six, seven of seven four. Seven of six, seven of three, seven of four. Although now I'm starting to think we can have a seven of seven. <laughs> well, yeah. We've, we've already said we, that there's such a thing as a seven of seven. So then maybe next episode we'll just do... 
seven to four and seven to seven. Yeah, maybe. If I remember that I said that. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And at some point we have to start dictating Neapolitan sixes <sighs> and, and German and the various augmented sixes. I'm scared. Modulations. But I got this. We All got right. this. We got this. I believe in you. All right. <laughs> believe in us. Believe in us. And we will believe in you. Yes, we will. And believe that we will be back soon with yet another awesome episode. Well said. <laughs> On that note, we'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Well, that wasn't so bad. And now, you have a new color for your musical canvas. We truly appreciate our listener feedback. So never be afraid to speak your mind or ask questions. You can do this at info at musicstudent101.com.